All right, Shalom. First and foremost, I'd like to give all honor and glory to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Haraka Kurash, the bonus to the elders and the apostles of the great millstone. Citations to all the Akim, pushing the word with true charity and with charity. Yahweh is the true name of the Heavenly Father, whom the word and he calls God and Jehovah, Bahasham is in the name, Ha being the. Uh, Yahweh Shai is his son's name, who the word and he calls Jesus. Raka Kurash is the Holy Spirit, Spirit Holy. But hey, as always, on the body of Dyer from the Great Millstone Branch here in Chicago. Uh, coming back out with another lesson to you, so-called Negroes, Latinos, Native Americans, which are the children of Israel, the true sons and daughter of the uh, the blood descendants of the Israelites of the Bible, man. You know, as well as the speckled bird, the scattered Israelite foreigner who scattered among the other nations whose outer appearance may seem to be of those nations, but whose lineage through their father's uh, line go back to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. You are Israelites as well, no matter what your outer appearance may seem to be. And as always, I'm your diary from the Grimmelstone Branch out here in Chicago. And hey, I'm back at you another lesson. It's going to be entitled Enjoy Now, Suffer Later. You see, and it's just a post that I've seen on uh, Instagram and whatnot. And uh, yeah, as you see in the photo, you got everybody turning up in a club. You know, a lot of debauchery, you know, going on. And that's pretty much uh, the sentiment of how our people are living today. You see? The scriptures in uh, 1 Timothy says that she that liveth in pleasure is dead while she liveth. You see? Because they ultimately sow into the flesh. You're going to reap. Uh, sow into the flesh. You're going to. Matter of fact, let me grab that really quick. This is uh, Galatians 6. This is Galatians 6 and 7. It says, Be not deceived. The Most High is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. You see, the Lord sees everything that our people are doing. You see, hey, the scriptures, the Lord said that. Uh, time of this ignorance. This uh, Acts 17 and 30, and I'm going to jump back to that. This Acts chapter 17 and verse 30. It says, uh. In the times of this ignorance, the most high winked that, but now command of all men everywhere to repent, right? And they are people, you know, a, a, they, they have no cloak for their uh, for their wickedness. You see, the prophets have been set up to reprove them and show trans show uh, Jacob their transgression. That's what we've been doing, starting with our elders and apostles and the elders that were before them since uh, the late 1960s. You see, but uh, they have not hearkened. So you see, they're not gonna be uh they're they're not gonna they're they're gonna be without excuse in the day of judgment. You see? Verse 31 it says, Because he have appointed a day in which he will judge the world in righteousness by the man whom he have ordained. And we know that judgment day is coming soon. We know this from what's going on in the earth. We understand this. We have the knowledge that the Lord is near, that he's gonna send his son back. It says, uh because he have appointed a day in which he will judge the world in righteousness by the man whom he have ordained, whereof he have given assurance to all men that he that have raised him from the dead. You see? But uh, going back to this uh, Galatians 6 and 7, be not deceived, the most high is not mine for us over man, so of that shall he also reap. And whatever our people, however they're conducting themselves here in the latter day, they're going to reap the benefit of it. Some people, as it says in Romans 2, are, are laying out for themselves wrath, storing up for themselves wrath against the day of uh, wrath. Making the Lord more and more angry with the works that they are doing, but some of them, who's uh, who's patiently been waiting, uh, I gotta just get that one part. This Romans two, quoted the first half, but matter of fact, I started verse. I started verse five. I gotta hit it, slack it. It says, but after thy hardness and impenitent heart, treasure up unto thyself wrath against the day of wrath and revelation of the righteous judgment of the Most High. You see? And because our people don't want to repent, they, they today constantly want to be, uh, as it says in Hosea 4 and 6, our people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. But when you read up, it tells you that they strive with the priest. They want to argue with us. They want to serve the Lord how they want to serve the Lord. They don't want to be in order. Right. So the Lord said, you're treasuring up wrath against the day of wrath and the revelation of the righteous judgment of the Most High. So when the Lord brings back that judgment and he comes to give you what you've been, what you worked for, you, you didn't worked up wrath. You didn't made more and more wrath upon your own soul. 
Verse six, who were rendered to every man according to his deeds, to them who by patient continuance and will doing seek for glory and honor and immortality, eternal life. So everyone is going to be rewarded unto what their deeds have been. So those that have been patiently continuing in the will doing, partaking in the ministry, a uh, pushing Israel, uplifting Yahweh, Yahweh shine, truth and sincerity, they're going to receive that immortality, that eternal life. But unto them that are contentious and do not obey the truth, but obey unrighteousness, indignation and wrath. You see, tribulation and anguish upon every soul of man that do of evil of the Jew first and also of the Gentile. So going back to this image, enjoying now living a hedonistic lifestyle, which is a lifestyle based off the pursuit of pleasure, which ultimately is fulfilling the lust of your flesh. Not fighting, you're going to end up suffering later. That's that anguish that the scriptures speak of that's that wrath that the lord is going to speak with and that's not uh that's not hell so to say but that's going to be uh the lake of fire which is america babylonic great which is going to be pelted with with millions of missiles man icbm missiles man right you're going to suffer later but it says suffer now a hey, 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 acknowledging that you sinned against the lord hey ultimately be it a prisoner you will be shy you know having that faith is going to lead to everlasting life, a crown of righteousness from the Lord's hand. It ain't no so-called white man, you see. So that picture was on point, man. You see, so enjoy now, suffer later. You know, I'll read the caption really quick. It says, as an adult, nobody's going to put you in, 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 in your place besides the Most High. Some praise the Most High, but literally do nothing to represent him spiritually. He's not a spiritual being, so the only way to give him credit and give him glory is by keeping his commandments. Your thoughts and words don't matter. Your actions do. And that's pretty much on point. John 15 and 10, if you keep my commandments, you shall abide in my love, even as I have kept my father's commandment and abide in his love. Hey, that's on point, you see. But hey, this is Sirach 19 and 5. Matter of fact, I didn't even finish this. Uh, Galatians 6. It's a little bit more. Galatians 6 and uh, 8. It says, for he that sold to this flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption, because that's all that can come forth from this flesh is death. The scriptures. <clears throat> Second Thessalonians, I believe it to you that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of the most high. This 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 flesh is evil. So if you give you give this flesh the desires that it wants, you're gonna offend against Yahweh Bahasham Yahweh Shai, the, the, the true righteous judge. So it says, uh, for he that sow to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption, but he that sow to the spirit shall of the spirit reap life everlasting. So if you sow so spiritually, a hey, having faith in the Lord, praying, uh uh, keeping his commandments to the best of your abilities, doing what's right, righteous in his eye, that's going to lead to everlasting life. You see, as it says right here, it's like you, verse 8, it says, uh, For he that sold up to his flesh of the fresh reap corruption, but he that sold up to the spiritual of the spirit reap life everlasting. You see? So, how you're conducting yourself on the earth. In the latter days, it matters on how the Lord is going to judge you, you see? Verse 9, and let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. And that's the point, man. We're, we're going to, hey, hey, let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. And hey, we want to reap that everlasting life that the scriptures speak of, you see? But going into it, this Sirach 19 and 5, whoso take of pleasure in wickedness shall be condemned. But he that resists the pleasure crown of his life. So whosoever take part in, in, in wickedness, which the scriptures tell you not to. I'm going to have to grab it in on the whole nother. Oh, perfect. I think it's Sirach 9. Sirach 7. Sirach 7 and 1, do no evil, so shall no harm come unto thee. Depart from the unjust, and iniquity shall turn away from thee. My son, sow not upon the furrows of unrighteousness, and thou shalt not reap them sevenfold. <laughs> and that's the point, man. Look, don't do wickedness, 
lest you reap it seven times the more, the, 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 the benefit, death, destruction, judgment. You see? So going back to that Sirach 19 and 5, whosoever take of pleasure in wickedness shall be condemned, but he that resists of pleasure, crown of his life. Those that resist pleasures, that exercise temperance, self-control, self-restraint, and walk uprightly, you're going to crown your life. You're going to receive that salvation at the hand of the Lord. You're going to receive that crown of life. You see? But whosoever take of pleasure in wickedness shall be condemned. If, you, if, you, if your pleasure is in unrighteousness, the Lord is going to destroy you, man. What does a pleasure and unrighteousness look like? Women uh, uh, not being in order, you know, use, taking advantage of the liberties that Esau, Edom, given them, you know, not following the laws, statutes, commandments of the Lord, how he want us to live, how he commanded us to live, how we agree to live. You see? We're going to it. This is Ecclesiastes 12 and 13. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear the Most High and keep his commandments. And that's the, that's, the, that's the duty of the Israelite man is to fear the Most High and keep his commandments. It's not to, to, to be a rapper, to get a big house, 16 holes, five cars. It's to fear the Most High and keep, his, and keep his commandments. For this is the whole duty of man, the Israelite man. And woman and child as well. Verse 14, for the most I shall bring every work into judgment with every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. You see, none of our ways are hid from the eyes of the Heavenly Father. Sirach 17 or Ecclesiastes 17 and 14. And he said, matter of fact, I sorry, 10. And the elect shall praise his holy name. Beside this, he gave them knowledge and the law of life for inheritance. Speaking of the Israelites, he gave us the law, statutes, commandments, the, the wisdom of the Holy Scriptures, the understanding. He made an everlasting covenant with them and showed them his judgment, judgment, judgments. Their eyes saw the majesty of his glory and their ears heard his glorious voice. And he said unto them, beware of all unrighteousness. And he gave every man commandment concerning his neighbor. So the Lord told us, don't do, don't do not sin. You know, beware of all unrighteousness. Take heed to what's written within this law that you can follow it, that you may live. Right. It says and gave every man concern commandment concerning his neighbor, how to treat one another. Verse 14, and he said unto them, beware of all, beware of all unrighteousness. And he gave every man commandment concerning his neighbor. You see? And he gave, well, it's like it. Dude, I read that. Verse 15, their ways are ever before him and shall not be hid from his eyes. So the Lord sees everything that the Israelites are doing, whether it be good or evil. And we're all going to have to pay for it. The Lord says he's going to come with a reward to every man according to their works have been. That reward in Revelation, it can either be a good reward or a bad reward. Salvation or destruction. Verse 16, every man from his youth is given to evil. Neither could they make to themselves fleshly hearts for stony. Verse 17, for the divisions of the nations, it's like it, for the division of the nations of the whole earth, he set a rule over every people, but Israel is the Lord's portion, whom being his firstborn, he nourisheth with discipline, showing that the Lord ain't dealing with every nation on this planet, man, only Israel. Whom being his firstborn, he nourished with discipline and giveth him the light of his love, doth not forsake him. Therefore, all their works are as the sun before him, and his ways are continually, and his eyes are continually upon their ways. None of their unrighteous deeds are hid from them, but all their sins are, are before the Lord. <sighs> and that's the point, man. The Lord sees everything that we're doing, whether it be good or evil. I believe that's in Colossians as well. Colossians, I think, three, if not four. This uh, Colossians 3 and 23. <laughs> and whatsoever you do, do it heartily as to the Lord and not unto men, knowing that of the Lord you shall receive the reward of the inheritance. For you serve the Lord, Yahweh shall Mashiach. But he that doeth wrong shall receive for the wrong which he hath done, and there is no respect of persons. You see, so if you're not covered by the blood of the Lamb, of, by the blood of the Lamb, Yahweh Shai, you're, you're going to have to pay the, uh, the, the, the tab for your sins, for your wickedness, which is death. The scriptures say that the wages of sin is death. But this is uh, Ecclesiastes 11 and 9. 
I mean, fact, let me make sure I hit verse 14. For the most high, Ecclesiastes 12 and 14, for the most high shall bring every work into judgment with every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. You see? So Ecclesiastes 9 11, rejoice, O young man, in thy youth, and let thy heart cheer thee in the days of thy youth. Right? So hey, rejoice, have fun, go out there, do, do whatever your heart wants you to do, right? And walk in the ways of thine heart and in the sight of thy eyes. But know thou that for all these things, the most high will bring thee into judgment. That's why the scriptures tell us to lean on to our own understanding. Uh, matter of fact, if I may grab it, it's Proverbs 3 and 5. It says, trust in Yahweh with all thy heart and lean not into thy own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct thy paths. Be not wise in thy own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. You see, point being verse seven, it shall be health to thy navel and marrow to thy bones. So taking heed to what the Lord says, it's going to benefit you. It's going to it's going to benefit you greatly. You know, <laughs> Shrimp said a merciful man doeth good to his own soul. But he that is a uh, trouble, trouble, flesh. The Proverbs 11 to 7, the merciful man doeth good to his own soul. But he that is cruel, trouble of his own fresh flesh. You see, so in sinning. You only hurt yourself, you see, because you're going to have to pay for it. And that payment is death, destruction. And we're going to enter Jacob's trouble a time like never before. Jeremiah 30 and 7. Second address tell you how bad the times are going to be, man. Hey, hey, fear the most high. It says, uh, but know thou that for these things, the most high will bring thee into judgment. Right. So if you want to be in that YOLO, I'm here for a good for a long for a good time, not a long time spirit. Yo ass gonna get judged for it. You're gonna have to pay for it. Verse 10, therefore remove sorrow from thy heart and put away evil from thy flesh, for childhood and youth are vanity. Right? All of this stuff is vanity, man. They they tell you growing up, you gotta do this and do that, and you gotta test well, all that shit is vanity, man. Serve the most high and keep his commandments. You see? But hey, this is first Peter 4 and 1 for as much. Then as Hamashiach have suffered for us in the flesh, Arm yourself likewise with the same mind, for he that has suffered in the flesh have ceased from sin. And ultimately, coming back to the knowledge of this truth, the scripture says, Prepare your soul for temptation. The Lord is going to prove you with hardship. And that's that suffering. Uh, and that's that suffering, you know, that, that, that proving, that testing of one's in integrity, uh, fidelity, faith. <sighs> So it says, for he that have suffered in the flesh have ceased from sin. Going through that, that spiritual fire, that spiritual trial, that fiery trial of your faith right now is going to save you from that uh, physical fire, which also is going to save you, you know, by the kingdom of heaven to the kingdom of heaven, so to say. Verse two, that he no longer shall live the rest of his time in the flesh to the lust of men, but to the will of the most high. You see, Yahweh Shai, he's the example that we are to follow. It says that he no longer should live the rest of his time in the flesh to the lust of men, but to the will of the Most High. So we no longer should live according to what this world wants us to live to, but according to the will of the Most High. And what does the Lord require us to do? Repent, come back to him, acknowledge thine iniquity, and hey, dwell no more with our sins, you know, to do better. Verse three, for the time past of our life may suffice us to have wrought the will of the Gentiles when we have walked in lasciviousness, lust, excess of wines, reveling, banqueting and abominable idolatries. So hey, we had our time in a world in which we walked and did all these things. And hey, let that be enough. It, it suffice of thee. It was enough. Verse four, wherein they think it's strange that you run not with them to the same excess of rise speaking evil of you. So when you do reform, uh, when you do reform, repent change your way you know as it says in isaiah 59 i believe verse 13 maybe it tells you that he that uh let me just make sure no oh, it's <laughs> way off isaiah 59 and 15, a true fellow, and he that departed from evil make himself a prey. And the Lord saw it, and it displeased him that there was no judgment. And that was the point, you see. So, a, a, a de de departing from evil, you make yourself a prey, you know. But, yeah, man, it is what it is, man. These people are going to burn. We want no part in that smoke that the Heavenly Father is going to come with. You see, this is Hebrews 12 and verse 5. It says, And ye have forgotten their exhortation which speak unto you as unto children. Proverbs, I believe, the third chapter as well. 
It says, My son despise not thou the chastening of the Lord, nor faint when thou art rebuked him. So don't decide, don't look down or be upset or, or d despise the chastening, the moral improvement, the uh, correction for moral improvement of the Lord. It says, uh, Nor it says, nor faint with our rebuke of him for whom the Lord loveth, he chastened him and scourge of every son whom he receives. So the Lord, he chastens us. He, sh he, he corrects us through a, a trials, a, through the fire right now to sharpen us because he loves us. It says, verse seven, if ye endure chastening, the most high dealeth with you as with sons. So if you a, hold on and cleave unto him and do not depart from the Lord, he gonna get you through it. Hey, 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 the Lord is proving you. You're one of his sons. It says, for what son is he whom the father chastened of not? Right. So uh, if you're a son of the most high, if the Lord loves you, you're going you're gonna to try. You're gonna, you're gonna, he's going to correct you, man. Just like your worldly father. You know, if he see you doing wrong, he don't come and whoop your ass so that you don't do that wrong anymore. and You don't hurt yourself. Same thing with the heavenly father. Verse eight. But if ye be without chastisement, whereof are all partakers, then are ye bastards and not sons. So if you don't receive that chastisement of the Lord. Then you're just partakers with the with the wickedness and the wicked people of this world, which is gonna lead you to this. It says, weeping and gnashing of teeth, and a minor prophet to tell you that their eyes shall consume away in the holes of their sockets, the mouth, tongue should melt, all that, man. Pure judgment. And we want no part of that, man. This is 1 Corinthians 11 and 32. But when we are judged, we are chastened of the Lord that we shall not be condemned with the world. So when we go through our uh, correction, our hardships, our fire, our spiritual fire, and we are chastened of the Lord so that we are not punished, condemned to, to, to that, that second death, that fire, along with this world, man. You see? So suffering now, suffering for righteousness sake is going to lead to everlasting life, man. This is Hebrews 12 and 9. Furthermore, we have had fathers of our flesh which corrected us, and we gave them reverence. Shall we not much rather be in subjection unto the Father of spirits and live? You see? So hey, you, you receive correction from your worldly father. How much more the heavenly father? Verse 10. For they verily for a few days chasten us after their own pleasure, but he for our profit that we might be partakers of his holiness. And ultimately, the Lord is chastening us now so that we might, may be the first fruits, may partake in a translation to the kingdom of heaven. Now, verse 11. Now, no chastening for the present seems to be joyous. Yes, of course, that shit hurts. It doesn't feel good. Don't don't really want to go through it. But we understand that going through it, that 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 by going through it, we're going to get to it. Nevertheless, afterward is yielded the peaceable fruit of righteousness unto them which are exercised thereby. So going through that chastisement, accepting it, and, and, and getting through it through the spirit of Yahweh Hashem El Shai, it, you're exercised into the, it, you're fashioned in a manner that the Heavenly Father wants you in to save you, man. To save you. This is uh, 1 Peter 1 and verse 6. It says, Wherein ye greatly rejoice, though now for a season, if need be, you are in heaviness through manifold temptations. Matter of fact, let me read. Let me see what we're reading up. First Peter 1 and 9. Mm -hmm. Right, so we rejoice right now going through different and, and uh, various temptations. Verse 7, that the trial of your faith being much more precious than of gold that perisheth, though it be tried with fire, might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearance of Yahweh Mashiach. So when the Lord comes back and he finds those that have faith and you see what you've been through and that you still have the faith, the Lord is like, okay, that's honorable. That's glory. That's my servant. Deliver him. Cherry, go grab him. A second death, have no, have no uh, power over him. Jacob's trouble, have no power over him. Condemnation, have no power over him. Translate him. Verse 8, whom having not seen, ye love, and whom though now ye see him not, yet believe, and ye rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory. You see? Verse 9, receiving the end. It says, receiving the end of your faith, even the salvation of your soul. So going through, so having that faith and that faith being tried with spiritual fire, afflictions, shit happening, hardship. You know, a suffering, 
spiritually, physically, financially, whatever it may be, ultimately is, is for the greater good, receiving the end of your faith, even the salvation of your souls. Hey, hey, de being delivered from what's going to happen, man, the, the evils that's going to come upon this earth. Verse 10, of which salvation of prophets have inquired and searched diligently who prophesied of the grace that shall come unto you. You see, so we're about to receive that great reward that all the prophets spoke about. You see, if we endure. The second Peter 7 and 18, nevertheless, the righteous shall suffer straight things and hope for why. So we're going to suffer hard things, but we're going to have hope for why. We're going to have hope for the kingdom of heaven. We're going to have hope for a uh, 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 a uh, uh, better heaven that's like it for new heaven, a new a new heaven, a new earth, wherein dwell of righteousness, right? It says, a hope for our, for they that have done wickedly have suffered the straight things of the yes shall not see the wide. Hey, two thirds of our people, they're going to suffer just like us. But since they're not suffering for righteousness sake, they're going to suffer and get destroyed. You see? So hey, it's better to suffer now and to enjoy later than to enjoy now this this pleasant this present evil world, which which ultimately all this is just at the, the end result of wisdom of Solomon the fifth chapter we reared ourselves in wickedness and wickedness and destruction. I gotta grab it because that's what the, that's what the end of that mirth is, man. It's a realization that you fucked yourself over, man. You, you screwed your soul over. Verse 7, verse five, 6, Wisdom of Solomon 5 and 6. Therefore have we erred from the way of truth and the light of righteousness have not shined unto us. And the sun of righteousness rose not upon us. We wearied ourselves in the way of wickedness and destruction. Yea, we have gone through deserts where there lay no way. But as for the way of the Lord, we have not known it. You see? So hey, ultimately the end of the mirth, you know, having fun and doing all these witchery, witchcraft, sorcery, drugs, the pills, the lean, you know. Women being whores getting ran through. The end of that is is, is is you being wearied in wickedness and destruction. Verse 8. What have pride profited us or what good have riches what our vaunting brought us? All those things are passed away like a shadow and as a post that hasteth by. All that shit just leaves you right here. The lake of fire, man. So, hey, man, it's better to enjoy, so it's like to suffer now so that you can enjoy later. Lord willing, this was just a quick and edifying lesson. Call Halayim La, Yahweh Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Hawaka Kodash, the one of the elders and the apostles. Citations to all the I can push his word with true charity with charity. Shalom, Barakatham, Wa Ababa Ball.